<laughs> Coming up on Janice Edwards Bay Area Vista, we're talking with a man whose bright plans for his future have not been dimmed by either paralysis nor personal loss. The inspirational story of Daryl Rice. That's up next on Bay Area Vista. Welcome to Bay Area Vista. I'm Janice Edwards, and thank you so much for joining us today. At the age of 20, Daryl Rice's life changed forever. And despite what happened to him at that age because of paralysis, he continues to inspire others with his vision, his story, and his spirit. We are excited to have him with us today on Bay Area Vista. Daryl, nice to see you, and thank you so much for allowing us into your home. You're welcome. I appreciate your being here. Yes. You know, I mentioned in the beginning that at the age of 20, your life changed. Can you tell me what happened? Yes, uh, I was uh, one day uh, just uh, sitting around my house, and a friend came by and uh, told me that uh, someone had a puppy in there, uh, take it away. and. Uh, Explained to me about what, who had it, and and I I remember who it was, and I thought, I know him, and maybe I can help you get him back. Come on, I'll give I'll give you give me a little my time to help you, and I went around to try to help, and from what. I was told in some of what I've been remember. It was just that um, they just didn't want to re uh, return the animal to the person I was trying to help. So they got angry and just came out and started shooting. They just came out and started shooting started about shooting. the puppy? Well, they went back in the house. And they come back out of the house and they start shooting. Oh my gosh. So it was just uh like that it's my fault. Uh, I went to help. I wasn't intending on hurting nobody. Hurt nobody anything. But it happened. And I don't blame nobody. I take full responsibility for uh, what happened and Hopefully everybody, uh, you know, have learned. Well, hopefully they have, and that's really admirable that you say that. Just for clarification, so you're 20 years old, and what were you doing with your life at the time? Just um, still trying to find myself. So trying to find yourself. Trying so. to find myself, uh, working here and working different places, just uh, uh, freelance working with different people and just really just trying to find just, find just, just trying to find yourself like 20 year olds do. You went to help someone and all of a sudden tragically your life changed forever and you yeah. said that you were told a lot. I imagine you don't remember. What do you remember about what happened? What I remember I don't remember much. But you were but paralyzed I, because of the shooting, as a result of the shooting? When I was paralyzed, well, I woke up after being shot, and I didn't know what was going on. It must have been maybe 2 o'clock in the morning. 2 o'clock in the morning was fifth star. In the ICU. But I didn't know I was in the ICU. I thought I was t somebody had me tied down, and I was struggling to get up, and I started yelling, yelling out, someone, untie me, untie me. Why you got me tied down? And then a nurse that was in charge on the graveyard field. came over and said to me, 
You need to calm down, girl. You've been shot. And no, 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 no. Y'all have me tied down. Let me up. Let me up. So I got very uh, hysterical and just enraged that I couldn't believe that I was shot or paralyzed. And after the shock of recognizing and realizing what you were being told in the hospital, how was life different once you came out of the hospital and had to make the adjustments? You were unable to move your legs, your hands? Well, before I was able to come out of the hospital, I was so traumatized uh, mentally, I didn't. I didn't want to live. So I was trying to get anybody and everybody to turn my machine off. Turn off your ventilator? I was trying to get the ventilator. Because the ventilator is what helps you breathe. It keeps me alive. Yes. And I was just, I uh, couldn't believe I would have to have a machine to breathe for the rest of my life. And I didn't want that. But then I uh, told one friend manager, one of my sisters, uh, I came back from Louisiana. And she came to visit me. And after she was the last one, she uh, repeated what I said to my grandmother, and, and it hurt my grandma. And my father came and saw me and spoke to me in some very strong words that I almost called my grandmother to have a heart attack and I need to stop this and be the person you are. So I said, okay. So basically no more talk of trying to have someone help you commit suicide, but to no face, face what had happened. Yeah, I, I said no more. No more for now on out. I will live for my family, and I won't let my family down. Your story, I, I know, is touching so many people who are hearing this because many times something happens in life and we talk about the new normal. You adjust to life not being what it was, but such a drastic change and your feelings of, su of being suicidal are some that a, a lot of people can identify with and yet you had family to help remind you that who you are is so vital and that you were needed even though it was so different from before being shot. Yeah. If it went from family and some friends, it, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have made it this far. It's been many friends and nurses who helped me get to this point because I'm just the mental part, I need help physically. And I'm in control of my, my care because I've been taught by the best nurses how to, how to live, how to uh, take care of myself for the rest of my life. And by being taught how to take care of myself, that's gotten me to this point. Yes, because we're talking, and of course you look young for your age, we're talking 33 years later. Yeah, 33. You have, you have practiced self-care, you have a nurse 24, hours a day, correct? Uh, I have three nurses. You have three nurses, so you have, but there's someone who yes. always has to be with you. Yes, I, I can't be left alone for two minutes 
because of my ventilator malfunction or my tubing come dislodged from my trach, then I can suffocate within about two or three minutes. Oh my goodness. So, but I'm not afraid of it. I accepted it. I embrace it. I make the best of it. Because when I'm not, I call on my sister. And she always just helps me, set me. Your sister Trina. My sister Trina. She always inspires you. Oh, yeah, she always just tells me. Well, you know, one of the things that, as you're sharing that I think about is how you inspire others, because you said you take full responsibility and, and you didn't stay stuck in bitterness. What advice would you offer anyone who might be dealing with a shock, a loss in their life, sometimes with things much less daunting than what you faced? Many of us are in despair. I would say think, think before you act. Take your time. Take it one day at a time. And by one day, I mean minute by minute. Just, just take your time. Enjoy the best, the best of the day and think about what you want to do, how you want to do it, who you want to do it with. Who, who, you, uh, who helps you uh, when you're having a bad moment in between those minutes, uh, and just, and just uh, don't focus on what happened to you or, or ask why, because. Why it can never be after. And don't dwell on it. Because it's not something that you you can't you, you don't have control over the whole situation. But you can make the best. You can control your attitude. Yeah. You, you control your attitude and and just be kind to other people. Because people that around you that's trying to help you is what makes life easier. You mentioned the nurses who were so helpful when you were at the hospital, but you have had some of the same doctors for more than 20 years. Tell me how your doctors have made a difference in your care. Well, for one, they listen, and, and they don't just try to take control. We work together. They ask me what worked for me, and I give them my reply, and they always say to me, hey, uh, let's try this. Let's try. Okay, let's do this. They get my input, they with the input, and they want to they wanna keep me alive. Everett Rice is Daryl's younger brother, and he joins us now. Thank you for being here as well. Thank you for allowing us in. Thank you. Do you remember when Daryl was injured? You must have been about 15 at that time. How did it impact you? Um, it was difficult. It was very difficult. Uh, older brother. You know, um, someone you look up to. And um, when I first got the word that he was injured, I rushed to the hospital. And sure enough, that's when reality kind of set in for me. And certainly, we tragically hear so many stories of shootings. And you grew up in Richmond. In the near sense, as you've seen Daryl just really have such an incredible attitude. What have you learned from what he's endured? Strong spirit. Um, he's very willing. He's uh, been there for the family. Um, he's taught me how to continue on. 
even though you have your ups and downs, you know, you still have to keep continue living. You have to be strong. You have to survive. And I understand you're both sports fans? Yeah. Very much. Watch a lot of games together? Uh, well, when I'm down here visiting, yeah. You know, we've always been in the basketball, football. We're very competitive, you know. Um, he's, um, well, the whole family has always been into sports. But yeah, every time I come down here and visit with him, he, if we're not watching uh, something about animals, the animal planet, we're watching sports. I had asked Daryl about some of the things that he could share with others who might face a situation like his. As his brother, what advice could you offer other family members who might have to deal with a loved one who endures a life-changing accident? Um, like you said yesterday, um, just continue to love one another, stay together, believe in each other. We, all we have is each other. And certainly the needs are different, but focus on also the similarities, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, we all need to focus on what we need to do in life, you know. Again, it goes back to that strong spirit that he um, has always exercised. He's always, every day he shows an example. Um, he's always giving us the strength, you know. To, you know you, God bless you to be alive. You know, you just, you got to stay strong. So Daryl is the big brother. Do you boss him around still? No. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, uh, no. Real, real, real mutual. <laughs> real, we just, we just down each other's company. We just have fun in company. And, and like I said, when he come down, we make the most of it. Enjoy each other and, uh, and just keep ready. Other than you know. sports, are there any family rituals that you make sure you Oh, enjoy? yeah, we were talking about some a little while ago, earlier, about just, just stories and, yeah. yeah. Stories, favorite meals, things like that. All kinds of stories. Can you tell me one about Daryl? Um, let's see, the story that I know most is we were having a conversation, and he told me, you don't listen enough. We both were young, this is before he got hurt. And he told me, he said, you need to listen more. You need to shut up. And something I always remember. As you're thinking about this, I can tell you're moved. What is it that's touching you right now as you're speaking? He's right. You got to always listen. So that's one of the things that, that calm me. You know, no matter what I do in life, talking or when I'm um, taking care of personal business, even when I'm listening to them, now I just, you need, you need to listen. So that was like 30 years ago. So, so it's helped. And it still hits home in that way. Oh, yeah. It's the best advice you can give anybody. If you know, if you just listen, people listen to one another. I think you'll learn a lot more. You know, a book doesn't speak to you. You have to read it in order to understand and learn. That's what he's like. It's like my book. Mark Lampkin is a videographer who's actually done a lot of work with Bay Area Vista, but today he's on the other side of the camera because he and Daryl have known each other for a number of years. Mark, how did you and Daryl meet? Well, before I was a videographer, I actually was involved in uh, healthcare services, and I managed an office that uh, had an office in Vallejo, and uh, so we had this patient that I heard about, 24-hour daycare patient by the name of Daryl Rice. This, this young guy that the nurses and others say, man, he's this rambunctious guy. He's got all this energy and he's upset with people. And so I didn't meet him for a whole year. And on his 30th birthday, the uh, nursing supervisor, she said, well, come on, Mark, you know, you got to come out and meet Daryl. So I said, all right, fine. So went out because they had had a little party for him with cake and all that and I uh, met him. And I mean, we just like, <laughs> we hit it off. And uh, we've been friends ever since. So uh, since September 16th, uh, 1990, 
uh, we've been great, great friends. Yes. And Daryl, for you, how has Mark helped you as a friend? Oh, he's been a big, uh, a big friend when I need him, and, and just been really a, one of the biggest act, act, act just, uh, uh, when I need to know something in health care or just something in life. You know, I mean, I, I, he, he's been there for me, you know, through the 25 years. And it's, it's been good. And it, like you say, it's it just, you just don't meet people uh, like Mark, you know, uh, every day like that, uh, like the way we, we even come together. And it's just, it's, uh, it helps me get through my, uh, my nursing and my, just, just life, just having a friend, a, another good friend in my life. That is so important, and you mentioned that he's an activist, so as a friend and also someone with experience in health care, what do you consider Daryl's most pressing needs at this point? Well, uh, over the last five plus years, you know, the challenges in, in California health care are cutbacks, and you know, someone like Daryl, as you see his life, it's full. You know, even with what might be physical limitations, he has a full life. And he needs to be able to have the nursing care. And it's a lot more economical, dollar-wise, for him to be in the home with 24-7 nursing than to be institutionalized, being in a hospital. And so the challenge is that, again, we need Medi-Cal to be able to now uh, maybe increase some of their rates of pay to agencies because it has to go through a nursing agency. Uh, nurses who care for him should be paid well because his care is important. As he had said, he, he can't be two minutes without his, his breathing. And so it's important for that to be respected, I believe, as well. So uh, as we now are in a, an affordable care mindset in America, I think we have to look at people like Daryl as major assets who can teach us things about living, but that costs money. And again, it's a, it's a greater cost saving to have him at home than it would be to be in a hospital. Yes, and certainly when we talk about health care, there's always a debate and there are always two sides to this. We're really focusing on Daryl's story today, but it's important to bring that out because people who aren't aware of what a life altering difference it makes can have a greater understanding about this particular side of the issue as well. Yeah. Trina Rice Thomas is Daryl's sister, his older sister, and he calls her his rock. Trina, thank you for speaking with us now. And we know that you are in recovery from a stroke, and we're so glad that you're doing so well. It's okay. It's, praise the Lord. It's good. It's, it's good. good yes. And Daryl says you give him great advice. Tell me how you feel about Daryl. I love him. And um, she loved me. And um, my mother, five kids. So everybody get together, um, September, we have to get together and everybody come together, the Duro. We have to go, everybody go together with Duro and celebrate. Daryl, you call her your rock. Why is Trina your rock? Well, because uh, when I'm her, uh, when, I, when I'm really, really, really down, no matter, no matter what, I call her. And she just pick up the cell phone up and says to me, okay, what's going on? I just call to hear your boy or just, we just talk because, just because to hear each other's voice. And for one reason, I wouldn't be here for, when, for my sister. How has she helped you? Oh, she, she's the one that 
they told him to do what I needed to be done to me. When you were in the hospital? When I first got shot. He stepped in and and taking that control. And my parents wasn't there. And she was, uh, she's always been my big sister. You know, you look like you want to give him a hug or a kiss. You can lean over and give him a kiss if you want to. Uh, I know. You're my rock. Oh, yeah, you get to me. It'd be hard not to be able to talk to her. If I can talk to her every day or every other day, it'd be hard. Well, we're so glad that you two have each other. And Trina, thank you for talking with us. Can you talk a little bit about those experiences in terms of people disrespecting you because of the chair? Because I'm sure that could help others who might be dealing with this as well. He was trying to tell me that, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know nothing about my chair. Uh, I think I, I know it all. I feel sometimes after I am right, it's because I do know what I'm doing. And you're not going to change my, my, my trends of thought. I'm going to stay focused on, on me and what makes me keep going. People are people and you can't change people or, because for me, the human race never ceased to make. <laughs> Absolutely. <they're> <laughs> right. There's yeah. infinite possibilities there, and I like what you said, that people are people. And you can't change them, but you certainly can inspire them. And I think that people who have been blessed to join us today and to learn more about you and your story, your courage, your inspiration and your attitude might be a little changed if they were down in the dumps. Hopefully, after hearing your story, they will be inspired. And so I want to thank you so much for this opportunity to visit with you and to speak with you. And we want to thank you as well for joining us. And that's our show. I'm Janice Edwards. Thanks for all that you do to make our Bay Area the great place that it is. We appreciate you joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Please join us then.